Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Nep Nugget, where I give you one tip that will inspire you to act and motivate you to move. And I want to know, did you know that 72% of sales managers hold sales pipelines review meetings? And I know you're like, Nef, I don't have any sales managers. I don't have any sales pipeline, no sales rep, what are you even talking about? Well, if you're in business and you're a parallelpreneur, you're more than likely your own sales manager, sales person, sales rep, and you need to be reviewing on a consistent basis your sales pipeline. Even if, like I said, even if you're having those meetings with yourself, that is something that you need to do. You need to make sure that you're doing a good job of also managing those sales pipelines because you want to ensure that you're improving any leads that you're getting through that pipeline line and making sure that you can convert them if that is what is best for that particular lead that you're getting. So you may be feeling like your sales are stagnant, or you may be looking at ways to improve your sales performance. And all these answers can be found by really managing and utilizing some best practice that I'll share with you today on how to manage your sales pipeline. So on today's Nef Nugget, that's exactly what I'm going to be sharing, three best practices to manage your sales pipeline. And before we get into those best practices, I want to share with you the definition of what a sales pipeline is. A sales pipeline is a visual snapshot of where your prospects are in the sales process. And if you're like, okay, Neff, you're still over my head. What is this sales process you're talking about? Simply put, a sales process is just a set of repeatable steps that a salesperson, i.e. you, i.e. you as a parallelpreneur that's probably potentially wearing all the hats in the beginning, takes your prospective buyer from the early stage of awareness of you to a closed sale. So from whenever they first become in contact with you or first see you until they invest in your service, right? So let's get into those three best practices. So get, so number one, remember to follow up. Yes, I'm going to constantly drill following up into your brain because it's just so important. You know, buyers today have so many different choices than ever before. So if they, if they need you <laughs> to help them make the best decision for them, then by getting your product or your service, then it's definitely up to you to make sure you do that follow up. Now, 10 years ago, it may only took four sales calls, but today you probably need at least, if not more than eight to get that prospective buyer into that closed sale. Now, some of the best salespeople, i.e. my parallelpreneur powerhouses, clients will make sure that they, they keep following up because I'm constantly preaching, follow up, follow up, follow up. There's a fortune in the follow up. But for some of you who are not yet my clients, <laughs> you might fall into the category of the most who give up after two sales calls only. So I want you to make sure that you're always following up. And I'm not telling you that following up by any means of the imagination is an easy thing. In fact, it's currently ranked one of the hardest or the third, excuse me, the third most challenging thing for anyone in sales, i.e. you, because you have to sell your service, whether it's coaching or other, some other service that you're selling, but definitely it is a must. So I want you to make sure that you're following up, um, utilizing that best practice to manage your sales pipeline by following up. And one way you can ensure that you're following up on a consistent basis is to create some type of reminder so that you do it consistently every week or every month. You can call it like a fun name, like follow up Friday. And every Friday you're following up with anyone in your sales line, whatever it takes for you to make sure that you're doing that on a consistent basis, but making sure that you're following up. So make sure you are having those those calls and checking back in with those prospects that were interested in your service that you offered. Number two, I want you to focus on the best leads. Now, if you take a closer look at your sales process, remember that's just the steps you're taking your prospect or buyers to until they eventually become a closed sale, right? So just take a really good look at those things. You'll likely notice it probably takes about the same amount of time, you know, to close each deal to from when they first find out about you until they actually close, it probably takes the same amount of time, whether that's one month, three months, six months, nine months, a year, whatever that is for you. Just it's just that I don't take it personally, just depending on what you're selling, how long somebody may take to make that decision. That's something you cannot control, but you just need to be aware of what that data looks like. And since it takes the same amount of time, then you need to make sure you concentrate your efforts on the best, the most 
sales ready, high converting value leads that you have. Not get distracted by anything that won't push the needle forward in your business, right? So for example, if you currently sort your sales dashboard um, from just by the date only, let's start sorting it um, from high to low, right? Making sure that you're putting, you know, as far as revenue goes. So if you have three people in your sales pipeline and one person can get your coaching or your high-end service and that, you know, is a gazillion dollars. And then if somebody purchases your book, that's only, you know, that's only a dollar, you know, or somebody goes to your event, maybe that's a hundred dollars. Let's put it into the uh, from high to lowest terms of revenue. So in that example that I was utilizing, you would want to do like put the, well, making sure you're following up with the one, the coaching one, then looking at the person that wants to attend your event and then maybe looking at the people that may want to purchase your um, book if you have a book as a product, right? So that you can instantly see what leads are most valuable in your business. So you want to focus on the best leads, but we talk about best leads in terms of how much revenue they can generate for your business, right? And number three, we want you to drop any dead leads. Yes, any dead leads. Because as important as focus focuses on in on the high value leads, it's equally so important to know when to let go of a lead, right? So letting go can be hard. I know, you know, it, it took you however long or how much energy or how many networking events or how many uh, being of service in Facebook groups or whatever you're currently doing to get your leads. Now you're like, I'm telling you, Neff, I mean, I'm telling you, let it go. And you're like, Neff, wait a minute. It took me this amount of time to get this lead. Yes. But we want you to make sure you're concentrating your efforts on your best value leads, right? So it's okay. The lead is dead. And they clearly have stated they're not interested. Um, they cannot be contacted or you haven't, or you've spoken to them multiple times and they, you know, have not, you know, you cannot encourage them to go into the next stage of your pipeline, then guess what? It's time to identify them as a dead lead and and let them go and move on to the next. And you want to do that as quickly as possible because you want to make sure you concentrate your efforts because as a parallelpreneur, time is one of, is very is generally very limited for you. So you want to make sure that the time that you have to work on your business while you're still working at, um, alongside your career that you're very focused on how to utilize that time so just make sure you're no longer wasting time on any dead leads identify those dead leads quickly and then breathe life into any new leads that you may have um, that you can continue to move forward in the process so your one tip today is to implement at least one of the best practices immediately to manage your sales pipeline so I will go over them again for you number one follow up Number two, identify what your best leads are. And number three, drop any dead leads, right? And then I also want to give you some marching orders. Yeah, so comment below and let me know which one will you implement. I'll be watching. And for those who have never met me and this is your first time, let me properly introduce myself. I am Nefateria Fonde and I'm a certified business sales coach and author and owner of Go Get It Inc. And I specialize in parallelpreneurs. Those are go-getters who are building a service or coaching-based business alongside their career. I help them get clear on who their ideal client is, get confident in their services so they can get cash in their business and turn their side business into a thriving income. So if you're ready to for me to come alongside you in this journey, feel free to go to my website at www.nefeteriafonde and click the button that says book a free discovery session and apply there. Also, if you want to just stalk me out just a little bit longer, feel free to follow me on all social media platforms at Nefeteria Fonde. And if you want to get my free gift that I offer for just taking a few minutes to listen to me, then go to Nefeteria, go to www.nefeteriafonde.com and claim your free gift when it pops up. Make sure you claim it when it pops up. Now, as always, I love praying over my clients to come and the and the clients that I have. So let us pray. Lord, I pray profitability as and blessings over each and every business owner who is listening to this video, watching this video, reading the content of this video. And in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Until the next time, be profitable and be blessed. Bye for now.